So let's just open in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your presence. Oh, Lord, it is so sweet and so thick in here, Lord. And we just thank you for your presence, God. Father, I ask that every heart be fertile soil to receive the freedom that you have for them tonight, God, each and every one of us, Father, that we would walk into a new level of freedom. And Father, I just thank you for your angels that are stationed around about this room, Father, that are sitting next to some, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you. We give you permission to touch our hearts tonight in a new way. And we just bless you and honor you and we thank you for who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. And we thank you, Father, for what you've done over the last 10 or 12 weeks in people's hearts, Father, for the transformation that has come and the revelation. And revelation brings transformation, God. So we just thank you and praise you that it's just the beginning, Father. And each day, Lord, as they process the things that they've learned in the last 12 weeks, Father, it will bring greater levels and measures of freedom into their life in Jesus name. So tonight's topic is ungodly soul ties. Okay, once again, this is a no condemnation zone. No, you know, I think we just need to blanket this sanctuary as a no condemnation zone every time we're in here, but especially on certain topics and this is one of those. So, what are soul ties? They are invisible ties that bind you to another person, place, or thing. It's not just a person. It can be a place or a thing as well. So I'm going to paint a picture, a word picture, because the teacher in me is, is going to be coming out tonight. This I used to do with my kids when I was a teacher. And um, so I have lots of props and lots of visual aids, because this is one of those things that when you see it, it helps give you a revelation. So imagine that you have a number of rubber bands. I have all kinds of pretty colored ones up here. And imagine that you are connected to a person by attaching it to your head, okay? You're gonna have all these rubber bands attached to your head. Everyone that you've had an unhealthy emotional relationship with Okay, we're gonna have all these rubber bands hanging from our head. And then anyone you've had a sexual relationship with those, those rubber bands exert a subtle pressure when they're pulled back and forth between two people. Now you can imagine what that looks like. This heavy duty rubber band it's very thick. It might be a, an emotional relationship that you've had for a very long time, and it has a lot of impact on your life. So I wish I could actually like stick them to my head so you could see it. This rubber band, this purple one, just say whatever color, it doesn't matter, might be a relationship that you had only for a shorter amount of time. Now this little baby one, might just be a one night stand. But no matter how many that you have, and then we go back to the thick one, and maybe this is one that you have with your mother that never let you grow up and go out on your own, okay? So no matter how many of these you have hanging from your head, they all might be pulling you in different directions. And it doesn't have to be all at the same time. And it doesn't have to be a giant pull. It could be just a light, slight tug. So if you did it in your fingers, this is you and this is the other person. It's just a little tug here, a little tug there, a little twist here, a little twist there. You might feel like you're getting moved around a lot in many directions. And you don't feel free. Well, guess what? You're not. Soul ties need to be broken. A way of describing an unseen hold that ties us to a bad relationship is called a soul tie. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit, several different um, definitions of soul ties. 
It's a tie in the spirit realm that holds on to our soul. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. And a tie is something that binds you together, right? When you tie your shoes, it keeps your shoe on your foot. The key is, it is a tie, it ties you to something in the spirit realm that remains unseen but can strongly affect your lives, even decisions that you make and directions that you take. Now, that's David Cross. This is a great book. It's called Soul Ties by David Cross. The Unseed Bond Relationships it has so much great stuff in it. If you want to read it, I brought it just so you could see, because I'm going to reference him a lot. A soul tie is, is a spiritual bond with anyone whom you had a direct relationship with, and it holds us tied to them with either godly cords or ungodly cords of spiritual darkness and captivity. So we're going to talk about godly soul ties as well. But being tied to someone in ungodly relationships makes us spiritually vulnerable. An ungodly soul tie exists in the spiritual darkness and gives opportunity for the enemy to influence us, our lives, through the hidden links established through the other person. Spiritual bondage and defilement, which may be established from wrong relationships, remains hidden in our heart, but nevertheless brings disorder to our whole body. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, so soul ties can be good or bad, godly or ungodly. Let's look at scriptures that tell us about soul ties. We'll start with the bad ones. In 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 17 in the New King James, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. And that word joined there means glued together or cemented. In Genesis 34, 1 through 3, in the King James Version, it says, And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hittite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her, and his soul clave unto D uh, Dina. Okay, that word soul there is the will mo, emo, and mind and emotions, but it also means the passion and intent and the appetite of your heart. So soul ties can be driven by that appetite that the enemy places within our heart that causes us to create soul ties that should never be created. Okay, let's look at good soul ties. Good soul ties. In Genesis 2, 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. In what, 1 Samuel, in that verse we're going to refer to a lot tonight. In 1 Samuel 18, 1, it says, Now he had finished speaking to Saul, the so the, I have the soul. <laughs> The son of Jonathan was knit, oh no, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now that's a godly relationship between two friends. You can have very godly relationships and godly soul ties with people. It's all about the intent of the heart and whether there's control or if it's a godly um, knitting together. So let's talk about godly soul ties before we move on to the ungodly ones. In this book, in David Cross's book, he says, Marriage reflects the divine covenant that God has made with the human race, and Jesus confirms that God ordained a one flesh marriage relationship. This means that the physical and the spiritual intimacy literally joins the lives of a man and a woman. 
the strong bond under the covering God provides is very secure in that environment for the nurture of the couple themselves and indeed their children. The godly soul tie between a husband and wife develops a unity of the heart and the purpose for the things of God that that union was created for. Godly agreement is a powerful spiritual principle for furthering God's plan and the whole purpose for that family. What's the power of a godly soul tie? Godly soul ties bind a family in a significant defense against the destructive work of the enemy. True relationships will always yield to one another. That's the, um, I can't think of the word. That's the, um, whatever it is, of a, soul, of a godly soul tie. That's the example of a godly soul tie. When you yield to one another, when there's not control, an ungodly soul tie has control in it. So true relationships will always yield to one another, and this is very apparent, is how God ordained families for their well-being. The godly ties between little children and their parents should be strong and provide nurturing and protection as a child explores what the world around them is like. That's a godly soul tie between a parent and a child. It says it gives the child strong and per, be, that they should be strong and provide nurture and protection. Now, when a mom has a baby and she nurses that baby, there's a hormone that's released, and it's called oxytocin, okay? And that hormone is called the love hormone or the bonding hormone, the hormone of attachment. And it plays a fundamental role in a mom bonding with her baby. It is actually the, the, um, the hormone that makes a mom fall in love with her baby. And obviously... That is a critical thing. It also actually makes you give birth. And then you, the more it's released, and then when you're nursing, it's released more. And it just bonds that mom and the baby, which we're going to also explore that oxytocin later. But I thought this was so interesting. It has nothing to do with so the, what we're talking about tonight. But it says that... I was reading something, and it said worship, it talked about worship and its bonding agent. It says music also seems to have the ability to increase oxytocin levels, especially when people are singing in a group, which adds an element of bonding. Now, there it is, corporate worship. I think David talked about it on Sunday, right? Corporate worship. There's actually oxytocin released that causes an element of corporate bonding. Isn't that awesome? I just thought that was incredibly awesome. So it's just a little side note for you. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's go back to ungodly soul ties. In Restoring the Foundations, it says godly soul ties are... Um, Soul ties, I'm sorry, my tongue is not working very well. Soul ties are ungodly covenants with another person based on an unhealthy or sexual relationship. The covenant binds the two people together, and God honors and recognizes these as covenants. Even if you don't say, I do, God honors that as a covenant. And he leaves it up to you to decide if you're going to stay in that bondage or you're going to break that soul tie. And he makes a way for that soul tie to be broken and for you to be released from that. Now, we can have soul ties with a person, a place, or a thing. Anything that we have an unhealthy relationship with creates an ungodly soul tie. And so what does that look like? It could look like a father and a mother that exert way too much control over their children. Or maybe it's their children that are way past the age of them having control over it, that they still want to. Remember this big elastic band from your head, right? 
It could be a boss with their employees. It could be a pastor with their congregation. It could be food. Did you know that? You could have a soul tie with, an ungodly soul tie with food. You could have an ungodly soul tie with alcohol, drugs. How about fear? You can have an ungodly soul tie with fear, anger, control, a sports team, TV, social media, Facebook. And with a place, especially if you've had a traumatic experience in a place, you can have an ungodly soul tie with that place. Now, you might have a godly soul tie with a place, too. Maybe you have a favorite place to vacation, and it's just a great time where you spend with your family every year. That, that could create a godly soul tie with that place. But a lot of times, if there's a trauma in a place, you might have an ungodly soul tie. So even as I'm saying these different things, on the back of the paper that you have the prayer, just jot down anything that God might bring to your mind because we are going to pray corporately at the end. And then if you, have, if you really need somebody to pray with you about a specific soul tie after, we will also do that. So there's a lot of things you could have a soul tie with. And easy to break, but we want to break them. How do we recognize them? These are just a few examples. When I think about that person, I realize that there is a fear in me which relates to them. I would feel intimidated to contact, be in contact with them. I have always had to make an effort to keep this person out of my mind and memory, but they just keep jumping into my thoughts unexpectedly. When I think about this person or when I'm with them, I find myself getting confused and unable to make my own decisions. There are times when I can almost hear the person's words or even feel their presence with me. Now, that could be good or bad. I mean, there are times that you could hear somebody's words in your head, and it's not because you have an ungodly soul tie with them. But you, you can figure out that what the words are that are saying that would cause you to have an ungodly soul tie. Sexual images connected with a person may come into your mind. I seem to be a kindred spirit with that person, drawn to them in ways that are not helpful. Now, we could have a kindred spirit with somebody, and it could be a very godly relationship. But when that kindred spirit is not healthy, and it's not helpful, then we might have a soul tie. Even at my age, I am hopeless to make a decision without my mother. That would mean soul tie. Stretch, stretch, right? They're going to keep pulling on you. Okay, in Exodus 20, 14, it's the seventh commandment, and it says you shall not commit adultery meaning any form of sexual sin, physically, emotionally, or visually. In Matthew 5, 27 through 30, it says, Have you heard it said that you shall not commit adultery? But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in his heart. Now, that could go for women, too. We're not going to just say it's a man thing, okay? It could go both ways. Peter Horobin, who is also, he's like the guru on this. Look him up online. He's amazing. It's H-O-R-R-O-B-I-N. And we're going to see a video clip from him. He says, sex, is, sex is, can, is intended by God to be between one man and one woman in a marital relationship. That's his design for sexual relationships. When we obey him, God, we're worshiping him. So when we maintain a, a relationship rightfully inside marriage, 
It's an act of worship. When we maintain outside of marriage, it's still an act of worship. It's just not an act of worship to the Lord. It's an act of worship to the God of this world, little g. And it gives the enemy access to our spirits and our lives. When we do it God's way, he pours out blessings on that marriage. But when we do it the enemy's way, we get spirits. But I could tell you, they're not Holy Spirit, okay? And we have to get rid of them and evict them. Okay, Peter Horobin says, marriage is a mystery. And in Ephesians 5, 31, it says, for this reason... A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. It doesn't say they're going to become one spirit. It says they're going to become one flesh. Because you can have, you could become spirit to spirit with somebody and not be married to them. You could be one in spirit with a lot of people and not be married to them. Because it says that sexual relationships are not just a bodily experience. Our body and our soul are intimately involved in the sexual union. When the physical is over, the soul stays joined. Creating a good soul tie or a bad soul tie. In, I love the way this reads in 1 Corinthians 6.18 in the message. It says, there is more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is much, as much a spiritual mystery as a physical fact. I think that's, sometimes the message says it like no other. So, you know, when you see husbands and wives and They've been together a long time. You start, like you can, I, I love how Peter Horbin says, he could look into this congregation and he can tell who are the husband and wives because they start to look alike. And it's not they look alike physically, but you can just see the spirit that's the connection that they've been there so long. You start to be able to finish each other's sentences and you know what the person's going to say before they say it. You could look across a room and know what they're feeling. That's the connection in a godly soul tie. If, in fact, you had sexual relations with your husband or your wife before you got married, you have created an uh, ungodly soul tie outside of covenant that still needs to be broken. So... Just because you say, well, I'm married to the person, it's fine, I have a soul tie with them. No, you have a godly soul tie, but there's a part of you that is in an ungodly soul tie outside a covenant that still needs to be broken. Because everything that was attached to outside a covenant still has access. So visuals are very powerful. And I'm going to show you a a video that Peter Horbin did at Christ for the Nation. And it gives you a very powerful imagery of what soul ties look like in the natural realm, what's going on in the spiritual realm. So go ahead, Ray. It's a little bit long, but it's worth it. And what I'm going to say next is not true, but it is drama in order to illustrate the principle. Is that okay? Okay. So, Charlie and Jordan come to see me as their pastor and say, we love each other. (laughs) And we decided to get married. And I say, oh, that's absolutely wonderful. I've been looking at you in the congregation over the months and I've noticed that you used to sit on opposite sides of the church, but now you're all on the same side. So I thought something was going on. And... uh, I I would like to spend a bit of time with you before, individually, before we marry you. Is that okay? So just do this step over there, Jordan, just for a minute. And Charlie, 
Uh, I'm going to have a private conversation with Charlie, and none of you are listening, uh, of course. And, uh, and I'm asking Charlie about previous sexual relationships. Now, I know nothing about you two, so it doesn't matter. And out of the conversation comes the fact that Charlie had actually had two previous sexual relationships. And I had to explain to him... <laughs> <laughs> and I had to explain to him, well, that actually means, Charlie, that before God's eyes, you are actually already married twice. <sighs> because you are joined to two sexual partners, and when they come together as one flesh, they are still joined after intercourse has finished. So I'd like two girls to come up here now, uh, any two. <laughs> Come on, any, any two. Quickly. Just to help me. There's one. Another one. Another one coming. That's fine. Okay. Would you like to just... This is all imaginary. Just hold hands here with Charlie. And would you like to hold hands with Charlie as well? And, you see, Ch Charlie uh, is not just Charlie, uh, he's Charlie with A and B. <laughs> and, and the reality is that these two girls that had a relationship with him, they'd actually had relationships with other boys before then. So could I have four boys come up here please, quickly? <laughs> I say, you hold on to his hand, you hold on to her hand, come round here, come on, come round here, come round here, come round here. <laughs> now, now, just, just move back a bit over there, so get it, so, okay. You see, in Charlie in preparing for his marriage, it's not just Charlie, it's Charlie, plus all these are getting married. And, and the reality is that Jordan, very innocent and sweet and beautiful looking girl that she, Charlie thought she was, <laughs> could have two men come up here. Two men come up here, quickly. You see? <laughs> You, you hold on to her hand. <laughs> now, we are limited in our time, but this is, these are soul ties. These are relationship ties which have been established through sexual sin. And the relationships are finished, but the ties are still there. Are you hearing me? So, now what happens if they get married and this lad here gets involved in witchcraft? And the demonic's operating in his life and that demonic has free reign to move across things that are ungodly. So that demonic power can operate here and begin to operate in Jordan and begin to push the marriage apart and create friction and create problems. And anything that's happening in these relationships and anything that's happening over here is going to affect this relationship. See, we have to bring our lives into godly order. Now let's get back to this marriage we're going to have here. <laughs> See, I'm standing at the front as the pastor welcoming the bridegroom and the bride coming to the front of the church. Now, I've come to the front of the church, and what do you see coming to the front of the church? I thought it was just one person that was getting married to one person. The reality is that unless we deal with this, the church is going to be so full that there won't be room for any, any human beings. Well, you know what I mean. See, we've got to 
deal with these soul ties. So before we actually come to a point of joining together, Jordan needs to repent of these relationships, which I'm sure you do. And, <laughs> and I ask God to break those relationships and to unjoin you. And then I pray for the Lord to deliver you of everything of the enemy. And then we do the same here and ask the Lord to unjoin you and deliver you. And we give Wait, this... Wait, do we still hold hands with these guys? We, <laughs> 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 we, we get rid of everything else. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, for your willingness to help. Um, so we now have a situation where Jordan and Charlie can now hold hands together, and it's just Jordan and Charlie. <laughs> Charlie and Jordan are a lovely young couple. We just need the lights again. Thank you, Rays. So let's just draw an illustration. Wait, can you guys see up here? No, okay. Powerful video, right? Okay, so we'll say, we'll use his names, okay? Jordan. And this is Charlie. In the spirit realm, there's a tunnel that attaches Jordan and Charlie. And we were actually, Easter and I were ministering to a lady one day, and we said something about the tunnel. She goes, how do you know about that? And she was in the occult at one point in her life. And she said, that's real. There are actually tunnels that the enemy traffics in. So when you have an ungodly soul tie, just like they said there, all those things are attached to you. But there's an open door on both sides. And the enemy can go through this tunnel any time he wants. He doesn't have to come and knock and say, hey, Charlie, can I come in? Because of the sexual sin and the soul tie, that door is open all the time. So whatever is attached to Charlie and anybody he's been with and anybody who he's been, they've been with and anybody who they've been with, Easter and I were actually at a conference where Peter Horobin actually did this, and he brought a lot more people up on the platform. The platform was just about covered with people. And you just think, oh, yikes, all those people are attached to me, and I'm wondering why I feel so fragmented. But when we shut the, when we break the soul ties, this gets crushed in the spirit realm. And when the enemy tries to come and knock on, go through the tunnel, it's access denied now because it's been cut and severed by the power of the blood of Jesus. So soul ties are easy to break, but very powerful if they're not broken. So another, um, we're going to see another short little video, but soul ties, Jonathan Evans, it's um, the name of the video. Um, the little video was what you need to know about sexual attachment. Okay, so in Galatians 1, 6, 1, it says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, and that word caught there means to make one's own, to associate oneself as a companion, to seize, to lay hold of, and to take possession of. So when you are caught in sin, of any kind, but we're talking about sexual sin right now. The enemy has made you his own, made you a companion, laid hold of you, taken siege of you, and taken possession of you. No thank you. 
in Proverbs 5.22, it says, Your own iniquity entrapped the wicked man, and he is caught in the cords of his sin. Similar thing. So on the video, Jonathan Evans says, You are caught in sin, and with a soul tie to someone who is not your soul mate and the person that God has not intended for you to be with. And you're tied to them, not because you love them or like them necessarily, but because there's a biological thing that happens when, because we're wired for covenant. And that covenantal connection comes in sexual relationships. So when we have some sex with someone, guess what's released? Oxytocin. The same bonding agent that's released when a mom nurses her baby. It's a bonding agent that God placed within us for a husband and wife it to be released in a sexual relationship between a husband and a wife, one man and one woman. That bonding agent or that activity says, this is where I'm going to be and this is where I'm going to stay. Because remember, God created the marriage covenant to be between one woman and one man once. Not 10 times or 20 times, whatever. So the, why the first person, people say, the first person that I've ever had sexual relationship is the hardest one to break. I didn't know this until I, I, this was the first time I've ever heard this. It's because that is when the most oxytocin is released. The first time, because it's the, be the first time, the only time. And that bonding agent is released because it's a covenant and it's a consummation and you're supposed to stay with that person forever. So that is why um, when a man and a woman come together, there's blood because the blood was shed on the cross for our covenant, the covenant between God and us. And Jesus said he is the new covenant and nothing can separate us from him, right? So in Romans 5, 38 through 39, it says, for I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities nor powers or anything to come nor height nor depth or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's the covenant. And it's just like what it's supposed to be with the covenant between a man and a woman before God is that that relationship is not supposed to be severed. And that's why the oxytocin is the bonding agent between the husband and the wife. And Remember, it's the same thing that is released with the mom and the baby because that relationship is never supposed to be broken either. Is it supposed to be unhealthy? No. But is it supposed to be broken? No. And in Mark 10, 9, it says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate, including the people who joined it together. So the husband and the wife. When we try to separate the, from the person that we've had sexual relationship with, it's tough. It becomes like a tearing because you became one flesh with that person. And the oxytocin is released and it bonds you to that person like glue. So this is what it looks like. I told you, lots of visuals. So this is Charlie, and this is Jordan. There are two. When they get married, they become one. 
But if you, if Charlie and Jordan, like he said on the video, have had sex with somebody that there's not in covenant with, this one's not going to rip so well, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. This is very old. It's kind of crumbly. But this is what it looks like. It's a tearing of your flesh. And when you tear your flesh, some of Charlie's left on Jordan and some of Jordan is left with Charlie. So you think about it, all those people that they had up on the stage, how many times their flesh got ripped and how much, how many fragments are still with each one of those people and sometimes you wonder why you don't feel whole. This is why you don't feel whole. Because this is what it looks like. There's no way, because of that bonding agent, that you can pull it apart and you look like this. One day, we were in, um, way back in the beginning, we met in this little church, and they had pews, like hard pews, like didn't move, like the wooden pews. And I was praying for a lady that we were breaking soul ties, and she had had a lot of sexual activity in her life, no condemnation. She, she just had had. And so when I prayed for her, her body literally almost flew over the back of the pew, and thank God somebody caught her that was behind her, and I said, what just happened? And she said, I literally felt the fragments of myself come back to me. And it threw her backwards because she literally felt them come back into her body. And she said, I have never felt so whole before. I mean, it was so powerful. And it was so God. Because God is the only one that can separate and have you looking like this again. Only God can do that. So I'm going to just show you. A little, another little two-minute video clip from Jonathan Evans. And before we play it, I just want you to um, think about why we say we're tying the knot when we get married. Because it's a little bit more than just a saying when you think about in terms of soul ties. Because a soul tie is you're being tied to somebody in the spirit realm. So let's watch this. A lot of people get in relationship. Ooh, you cute. I like you. All that kind of stuff there. And after a little while, not long, especially in our culture. Boom. They covenant sexual relationship and they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and the spiritual realm and the physical realm releasing something and then they realize as they keep doing it and tying this knot oh wait a minute this isn't right we need to we need to go in a different direction and the more you tie it and the tighter you tie it and it's hard to pull that thing apart because it was never meant to come apart. That's why God created us that way. What God is saying to us is simple. Yes, you have the connection. I need you to think about your destiny. I need you to think about your legacy, honoring God, being in my presence. I need you to do that while you're single. Adam was single. There was a lot that he was doing before his woman ever came around. And when she came around, she was 
easier connecto, essential collaborator, destiny, garden, God's presence, cultivation, keeping, all of those things. She became his wife. Then the two became one flesh. And the goal of that is, at the end of it all, you don't have to try to take it apart. Because that's the way it was meant to be. A lot of people get in relationship. Ooh, you cute, I like you, all that kind of stuff there. Thanks, Ray. Isn't that good? When we tie the knot, and sometimes you tie the knot and you don't even realize you have to untie it, and then you tie another knot and another knot, and then you start tying the knot with food, or you start tying the knot with drugs, or whatever you think is going to be the thing that uh, brings you the comfort that never really happens. So, oh, soul ties. We're going to break them tonight. Okay, bad soul ties through wrong sex. When we have sexual relationship with someone, it affects our, again, mind and emotions and our will. If there's been incest, rape, molestation, that is not your fault. I don't care what anybody told you. It's not your fault. However, it does create an ungodly soul tie that needs to be broken. And again, no fault of your own. None of those. I don't care who's told you it was your fault, not your fault, and but they have to be broken nonetheless. Masturbation, another one. Soul tie with it. Has to be broken. Bad to soul ties through sexual fantasy. Offering sexual, our sexual identity to porno, pornography is idolatry. Such images on paper, on a screen, in a fantasy world that you live in, um, you become tied to those images because it's a spirit-to-spirit -spirit thing. Your spirit does not know that that person isn't really right in front of you. You create a soul tie with it. And you create a soul tie with pornography. And if you think about, remember what we said, like everything that was attached to those people here, remember we talked about the occult having access through um, Jordan to Charlie, if somebody over here. Well, if you think about what's attached to pornography, you're creating a soul tie with everything that goes along with pornography. There's children in the room, so I'm not going to go any further than that. But you know what it is. Okay? That gives you, that gives the enemy access to you, unclean spirits, demonic spirits, and it is very powerful. Just because it's not physical touch, it's very powerful, and you need to break those soul ties. One other big one is, what is if you were going to marry someone, but you didn't get to marry that person? And you always think, I wonder what it would be like if I did. You probably have an ungodly soul tie with that person that needs to be broken. In 1 Corinthians 16, 18 through 20, it says, run away from sexual immorality in any form, whether in thought, behavior, this is in the Amplified, whether visual or written. Every other sin a man commits is outside of his body, but the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. 
Do you, know not, do you not know that your body is a temple of Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God, and that you are not your own property? You were bought with a price. You were actually purpose, purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. And I skipped one, I'm sorry. In Psalm 103, 101.3 in the Amplified, it says, I will set no worthless or wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the practice of those who fall away from the right path. It shall not grasp hold of me. Our, our, our eye gates are the pathway to our soul. So when we defile our eye gates with pornography, we're defiling our soul. Okay, we can have a bad soul tie with an animal because, and you could see it on the commercials, how it's very subtle, but you see they have an animal in the car with a woman or an animal in the car with a, uh, a guy, and there's, people do not good things with animals on the topic of what we're talking about, which creates ungodly soul ties with animals. And we know that some animals can have spirits because Jesus sent the demons into the pigs, right? So you can also have soul ties through wrong agreements, fraternities, ferar sororities, Freemasonry. How about drug addicts? They form like a little family of people who they do drugs with who they might live in an abandoned building with. Maybe they share needles together. That creates a soul tie. What about, did you ever do blood brothers when you were a kid? Like prick your finger and do, you know, rub it on somebody else's finger? Nobody? Nobody's ever done that? Lynn did? Good, thank you, Lynn. Oh, Lisa did. Okay, here, we got a few. This is up for Sabra, Lisa. Okay, I'm not alone here. Anyway, that's a, that could create a soul tie. And um, any rituals that are done with blood with the occult create soul ties as well that have to be broken. And why you have to break it with sororities and uh, fraternities and Freemasonry is because sororities and fraternities are rooted in the covering thing over them is Freemasonry. And Freemasonry is not of God. What about we can break, have bad soul ties with false healing? Now, there's so many people that are desperate for healing, and they might be going to off the, the beaten path of regular doctors, and they might be going to Reiki. That is not godly, and it creates an ungodly soul tie with the occult. You can have tarot cards people go to. They go to mediums. They go... Um, to psychics, get hypnotized, they do acupuncture, all rooted in Eastern religion or in the occult, and it creates an ungodly soul tie with the occult. And they're well-meaning people. I had a lady come up when my dad was in hospice, and she came up and she goes, I know your dad is incapable of any, getting any treatment right now, but I can give my service to you because he's not... And I can give you some kind of massage. And I looked at her, and I'm like, first of all, that's the last thing I want. Well, my dad is laying in the bed dying. And she, I said, no, thank you. I'm a Christian, and I just don't do anything like that. And she goes, oh, well, I go to church every Sunday, too. I said, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you do. I said, but whatever you're doing, I'm just not. But really, I'd be happy to do it to you. There's nothing bad about it. And she could not, I said, I don't mean to insult you. I said, but I just, I'm not interested. And I'm going to tell you, please don't come back here when I'm not here and touch my dad. Okay? And I said, I think I'll go to the nurse's station. And she goes, oh, I'll go and tell them for you. I think she was so taken back by me. I wasn't mean, but I wanted her to know. I didn't want her to touch me, and I didn't, certainly didn't want her to touch my dad. And that's really rampant in the hospital right now, Reiki. I was in the hospital for myself years ago, and this poor lady was dying in the bed next to me. And this lady came in to do Reiki on her. 
And for some reason at that moment she couldn't. So when the lady left, I told the caregiver, don't let them touch her. You're going to make it worse than she is right now. So, but sometimes when you're desperate, you'll run to whatever. Desperation should not drive us, right? So, well-meaning, like I said, well-meaning people. Just like people take their kids, you know, people say, oh, my mom took me to the Santoro to, um, for healing when I was a child. The mom d did it out of a good heart. She thought she was doing the right thing, but it was the wrong thing, and you have to break soul ties with that. Okay, false worship. Right? We can, um, idolatry and false worship is a surrender of our being to someone or anything that separates us from the true worship of God. Okay? And especially cults, other practices such as martial arts, yoga, um, and anybody who's a devoted follower of some kind of person like that could have a hold on your on your soul and you have to break soul ties with them what about pop stars singing stars they're called pop idols right for a reason you need to, could you might need to break a soul tie with them okay how do they damage us we're going to end with this we already did the tunnels right oh we're going to crush those what do they, how do they damage us? They try and steal our purity and our innocence. They muddy our destiny. Because remember we said you have all these other things going on. You have all these other attachments. How You don't have clarity of your mind anymore. And they try and destroy your destiny. You know the puppeteer that has, you know, it has the little uh, wooden sticks, marionette? Yeah, the marionette puppets, that's kind of what a soul tie does to us. Kind of like the rubber band. One pulls you this way, one pulls you that way, one pulls you. It's not you operating it. It's not God operating it. It's the spirit realm that isn't Holy Spirit realm operating it. And it pulls you in different directions, and it distorts your life. It keeps you in some measure under the influence of the enemy and the iniquity of the relationship that the person you're tied to. Remember, Easter talked about iniquity last week. That it describes crookedness and being out of alignment with God. Ungodly soul ties pull our hearts out of shape, that God, the shape that God wants them to be in. They can also damage us through unclean spirits or demons. Ungodly soul ties are relationship bonds of the uh, spiritual darkness that provide the environment for the activity of the powers of darkness, including demons and unclean spirits. Sinful relationships give the enemy the opportunity and the authority to rule us. With that, it strengthens the unclean spirits that are working through us. That's why we have to get rid of the demons that are associated with the soul ties that we've created. Sexual relationships outside of the boundaries of covenant of marriage enter the spiritual territory that belongs to the enemy. Perversion of the right sexual union are relationships established with God, ungodly soul ties can also be empowered by unclean spirits to hold the participants in deception and wrongful desires that are outside of God's covering. So an example of that would be if a couple decides, oh, well, we're going to watch pornography. Well, we're married, and it says the marriage bed is undefiled, and we can do whatever we want. We're married. Well, no, because that is creating an ungodly soul tie outside of covenant and outside of marriage. You know, there's all these new kinds of things, swing and switch and this and that and the other thing. That would be a married couple that are in covenant and in a godly soul tie, bringing in outside things that create ungodly soul ties within the marriage covenant. That you also have to break. In Romans 1, 24, it says, Therefore God gave them over in lust of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be 
dishonored among them. Remember, we're temples of the Holy Spirit. Temples, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit lives within us, we need to keep it pure. Ungodly soul ties make us defiled. They also could damage our physical bodies. The physical body tends to reflect the spiritual condition of our soul. A wrongful spiritual yoke or a soul tie weighs heavily on a whole person and may cause their body to suffer disorder and disease that is a consequence of the stress on the person's life. Infirmity promoted by demons occupying the spiritual darkness of an ungodly soul tie can specifically affect parts of the body that were subject to the ungodliness in that relationship. So for instance, infirmity in your back and spine seems to often to be associated with oppressive and controlling relationships that may have weighed heavily on somebody's life. There's different ones as well. But those are the kinds of things that soul ties do to us. They just mess us up. But God says, I want to set you free. Remember, God can break the soul tie and set you free. And you become like this again. Not like this, like this, whether you're totally pure, totally innocent, totally cleansed by the power of the blood, totally cleansed by the power of the blood, white as snow, white as snow, not even pink or blue, white as snow, like it never happened. That's how good he is. That's how good he is. He wants you disconnected from those more than you want you disconnected from them because it's messing with your destiny. So if you had anything that came to your mind while we were um, going over this, a place, a person, a thing, anger, might be a soul tie for you. It could be... Food, it could be drugs, it could be whatever. I'm hopefully it's not drugs for anybody in here, but anything that you might have a soul tie with that you want to write down, we're going to pray a prayer and we're going to break these things off. On the sheet I gave you, I gave you a short prayer and a long prayer. <laughs> the short prayer you could just do by yourself. The short, the long prayer we're going to do together tonight because it's a little more um, powerful. And keep this prayer because if you know somebody who's been in this place, you could share this with them so that they could be set free, that the fragments of their soul could come back to them and the fragments of the other person's soul could be released out of them. You don't want to be carrying somebody else's fragments. And you don't want somebody else carrying yours because it leaves you fragmented. God wants you to be whole. And if that other person is dead, then you just send it back out of you. You just send it out of you. Because you still don't want it even if they're dead. Because you might have to break a soul tie with somebody who's passed away. And... I remember at the same conference that we were at where Peter Horbin did that thing, this young man got up and he gave his testimony, David Kyle Foster. You could look him up. Powerful man of God. But his childhood wasn't very good. And he got way messed up. He was a male prostitute. He was bisexual heterosexual, he said he had over a thousand partners. So when he heard about soul ties, he was like, how am I ever gonna break those soul ties? I had so many encounters. What do I do with this God? And God brought to memory every single soul tie that had a lot of power over him. 
Because like I said before, remember like the oxytocin got released the most, the first one. But there are certain people, there were certain people in his life that had a bigger impact on him than, where's the little one? Then this little one that was a one night stand. There were some that were really big. And God was so faithful to show him the big ones. And he said them by name. But God said the rest of them, because there was no shame. If you have shame and you don't want to say it, that's one thing. But he was willing to confess to God whatever. And he said, God, you know the rest. I don't know their names, God, but you do. And I confess it because I want these soul ties broken. So again, like no condemnation, right? There's no condemnation. We're in Christ. He just wants you free. He wants these ties broken, severed, the access tunnels crushed so that you can walk in the to your destiny and feel free and feel whole, just like that lady I prayed for that almost flew over the back of the thing. It's only ever happened once that uh, that happened that way. But she literally felt it come back into her body. So we're going to pray this prayer, and there's a, a blank. And in that blank, you can just put anybody's name. And I know this is sexual, but you could put a, any person, place, or thing. You might have a thing that is you have an unhealthy relationship with. It might be your house. It might be your car. It might be some prized possession that's attached to somebody that you were in a relationship with. Whatever it is, let's get rid of it tonight. And we're going to put it in that blank. And like I said, if you need individual prayer for a specific soul tie, we're here to pray with you tonight. But we're going to pray this together now. So let's stand. And remember, God hears you if you say that. If you say the things to yourself, God hears you and honors that. If you want to say it out loud, feel free. But if you say it in your mind, remember, God knows every thought we have. So he knows. Okay? So Heavenly Father, let's read it together. Heavenly Father, I submit myself completely to you. I ask you to forgive me for any and all unnatural or ungodly relationships with any person, place, or thing. I ask you to forgive me for any and all sexual misconduct or ungodly soul ties, specifically with, I'm going to give you a minute to just, if you have any, to say it in your head. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that my spirit be loosed from them according to Matthew 18, 18 and 19. And I tell my spirit to forget the unions. I tell my mind to release responsibility for them. And I tell my emotions to let go and forget the unions. I tell the fragmented pieces of my soul to come back together, and I send back the fragmented pieces of their soul to them, and I hereby break every ungodly soul tie in the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, I choose to forgive each person that I have been involved with in any wrong way. I renounce all uses of my body as an instrument of unrighteousness. And by so doing, I ask that you break all bondages that Satan has brought into my life through that involvement. I confess my participation. I choose to forgive myself. I choose to no longer be angry with myself or to hate myself or punish myself. I now present my body to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. I reserve the sexual use of my body only for marriage. 
I renounce the lie of Satan that my body is not clean, that it is dirty or in any way unacceptable as a result of my past sexual experience. I renounce and cancel the assignments of all evil spirits attempting to maintain these ungodly soul ties. And Lord, I thank you that you have totally cleansed me and forgiven me and that you love and accept me unconditionally. Therefore, I can accept myself and I choose to do so. I accept myself and my body as cleansed. Lord, thank you for restoring my soul to wholeness. Let me walk in holiness by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we ask that every spirit that's attached with these soul ties that have been um, prayed through tonight, leave now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's attached and demon that's attached to any soul ties that have been prayed through tonight, we command you to leave these people now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that you crush the access tunnels now. That when the enemy tries to come and walk through that door, the door has been sealed by the blood of Jesus and it's access denied in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus that washes every crevice, crease, spot, and wrinkle on your bride, Father, on your sons and your daughters. And we thank you that the soul ties are severed and the enemy no longer has access to your sons and daughters through the soul ties, whether through people, a place, or a thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen.